Hey, thank you for tuning in today. Now, I want to address the question that I've been getting quite a bit from people out there who are trying to learn how to do the butterfly. If you are new to what the butterfly is or to my channel, what you're witnessing here is called contact juggling, and the technique I'm doing is known as the butterfly. I think they call it the butterfly because when you weave it in this figure eight motion like this, it kind of looks like the wings of a butterfly as you see that figure eight if you blend all that vision together. But the big question I get from a lot of folks is, how do you catch on the back of your hand? Well, catching on the back of the hand is the more difficult half of doing the butterfly because catching on the front of the hand is more or less simple. When things go in your palm, you're more comfortable with catching things and with holding things in the palm of your hand. Now coming back from the front of the hand to the back of the hand is where a lot of people struggle. So I hope to give you a couple tricks, tips, and exercises to make your catching on the back of the hand a little easier for you to do. The first thing I want you to do is put the ball on the back of your fingers between the two peace sign fingers. This is known as the two-fingered cradle. Now I know there's some people out there that swear by the three-finger cradle, and there's good reasons for that because holding it with the third finger makes it feel more stable at first. However, when you're actually executing the butterfly, what happens is the ball either wants to go between these two fingers, those two fingers, or in between both of them and over the middle finger, resulting in a little more uncertainty as to what's gonna happen. My philosophy is if you focus on the two-finger cradle, you'll always know where the ball is going to be every time you do your butterfly pass. That way, you're a lot better off and you can do the butterfly without actually looking at what you're doing because you're feeling it in the air the whole time. For contact juggling to be contact juggling, you have to count on being in contact with your juggling. And when you're doing the three finger cradle, you're at risk of losing contact for a brief moment while you're doing the butterfly over the top of the third finger cradle. I hope that makes sense. But back to catching on the back of the hand. So the best way to get familiar with the back of the hand is putting the ball right on the back of that two finger cradle and taking the time to slowly explore every little millimeter of the back of the fingers going all the way as close to the tips you possibly can go and all the way back down to the base of the knuckles. You kind of want to avoid being on the back of the hand overall. That's more of an advanced technique. What you do want to do though is stick between your two knuckles here and your fingernails, on the back of your fingernails. You don't want to go any further than that. So once you feel the ball on the back of your fingernails, you've gone far enough to the tips and you can go back down. And by sitting in this zone and going back and forth and playing in this zone, you're gonna turn a foreign feeling into a familiar feeling. So that's the first technique. The second technique I'd like you to do is go up a little bit and down a little bit, just little bits at a time. And you wanna get used to that feeling of weightlessness. As you go up higher, you're gonna drop down a little bit faster each time. But you wanna do this gradually for good reasons. The reason you wanna do this gradually is because if you just try dropping it immediately, really quickly, you might result in more dropping on the floor and having to chase after it. But if you go gradually, you can slowly, slowly, slowly introduce the feeling of the weightlessness and of doing that free fall drop. And that's gonna result in you dropping it a lot less and learning a lot faster as a result of going slower. I know it's kind of a paradox to think that if you slow down, you'll learn something faster. But here in this case, I think it's absolutely true. So a couple of memories come to mind when I'm doing this technique and that's that of soft hands. Have you ever played that game where you toss an egg to someone and they take a step back and you toss the egg again and you take a step back? It's a game that sometimes you play at birthday parties or block parties or community events and so on. The idea is to catch with soft hands, is to catch and come down with it and cradle it and slow down the speed at which it's accelerating through the air. No different from this technique, you're gonna learn how to catch with soft hands and slowly slow down the speed of the ball coming from 10 meters per second per second, which is the rate that something drops, to a gradual nothing of perfectly still. Now that you have those two techniques of exploration back and forth of the back of the fingers and slowly introducing a free fall speed of going up and down with the ball, slowly start very slow, a couple inches at a time, and then work to doing a full arm length of up and down. You should become a lot more comfortable with the back of your hand and it'll make catching on the back of your hand a lot easier. So now the third technique I'd like to share with you is when you actually employ catching on the back of the hand doing the butterfly. So you'll start right about here. You wanna keep the ball close to your opposite armpit and you want to butterfly all the way out, trying to keep your elbow in one spot the whole time. So you, you push with a straight wrist straight through the ball and it rolls into the palm of your hand. Now that's the easy part. The hard part is coming back. So what you wanna do from this point is aim to push the ball up in the air or right around where the top of your head is. So you push the ball up and when it gets to this point, you're gonna to want to twist your hand underneath and allow it to catch on the back of the hand just like that. 
I know it's easy for me to say I've been doing this for 22 years, but that's the idea. You want to make sure you do a very wide pattern and make sure you make full use of the up and down motion that we practiced earlier with the second exercise. So a big mistake I see a lot of people doing when they try to do this is they go too slow and they're apprehensive about flipping. Well, this is a big problem because you have to land here and you have to kind of push through in order to land there and it's difficult to do that when you do a very small arc. The bigger and the wider the arc, the more easier it will be for you to respond to the ball and the easier it'll be for you to catch the ball in the back of the hand. So you have to push it up, over and twist and then catch right in front of your face like this. So it helps to have the ball starting way over there, a little bit further over there than you would normally have it when you're learning how to catch in the back of the hand. Toss it up in the air, twist and catch in front of your face. It's a lot easier than pushing it and catching it way over there or somewhere over there. And that's another mistake I see people do is they want to catch it way over there not that they want to catch it way over there, it's because that's just how they're doing the technique. They're trying to do it too late and then they do their last minute effort and then it rolls down their arm and they're wondering where they went wrong. So you want to catch something closer to your face, it's easier to see. You want to push out and over and then coming back, push up over and twist in front of your face and that should help solve the issue of catching on the back of the hand. Another pro tip is to not do it sitting down. You want to stand up and bend your knees ever so slightly because if you bend your knees you can move your whole body with the ball and when you move your whole body with the ball and use your knees and your whole body with it you'll become one with the ball and it'll be a lot easier to use your whole body in order to cradle the ball and catch it last minute. So you're going to come up, come down and catch. Push it over back again, push up over and catch in front of you just like that. Break it down very nice and easy and make every attempt into an experiment. Avoid doing the same thing over and over and over again that's not working. And that's another problem I see a lot of people do is they'll do stuff like this. And they'll keep doing literally the same thing over and over again and they're wondering why they're not making any progress. Well, it's because you're doing the same thing over and over again and expecting different results. What you really want to do is to try something and pay close attention to what you're doing and then look at the outcome and the outcome will tell you what you need to do differently when you start over again. I hope that makes sense. Make every attempt into an experiment and take your emotions out of the equation. Don't get upset with yourself or with the ball or anything else around you if you repeatedly make the same mistake over and over again. You have to adjust your attitude and you have to adjust your attempts in what you're doing. So there you have it folks. This is my video on how to catch on the back of the hand while practicing the butterfly. I hope that it was informative insightful or even useful to anyone out there who's attempting to learn how to use the butterfly technique in their contact juggling practice. So that's where I'll leave you folks. Thanks very much for tuning in and watching this video all the way to the end. I appreciate it very much. Please make sure you check out my playlist section here on my channel. I'm a daily poster on YouTube. I'm a newer YouTuber as they say and I post about way too many things but I've organized all the content that I produced so far this year of 2021 in my playlist section to make it easier for people out there to find something that may pique their interest. And that's a wrap. This is where I'll leave you. Thanks very much once more for watching this all the way to the very, very, very end. I'll leave you with these words that I've been ending all my videos with lately, and it's this. Please remember to never give up. Do your best. Stay true to you and who you are and what you stand for. And be amazing, folks. What I mean by be amazing is just be the best version of yourself that you possibly can be. The world made you for a reason. You belong here. The world would be incomplete without you. So do yourself and everyone else a favor and just be the best version of yourself you can. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you in the next video, folks. Have a great night. Bye-bye.